Hey. What time is it? Seven. How's he doing? The same. Oh, did you take him off the blood pressure trips? I tried to around four, but they uh, they had to put it back. Do you hear anything from Pato? He landed about an hour ago. He should be here soon. Okay. Must come as a shock to him. See your dad like that with all the tubes coming out of everywhere. Well, he should have been here for the chemotherapy. Please don't tell your brother that when he comes. So what do you want me to say? I don't know. Hi. It's him. It's downstairs. I'll go get him. Okay. So, how's Tampa? Well, hot and humid. Cool. Excuse me, are you the family of uh, Mr. Melendez? Yes. Hi, I'm Dr. Chen. I've been taking care of your father for the last two days. I'd like to talk to you about the lack of progress and perhaps the possibility to withdraw care at this point. As you know, for the past few days, we have been unable to wing up the pressure on your father. Not to mention that he also has been making little urine despite all the volume we've been giving him. In fact, he has developed generalized edema. Um, what about the pneumonia? Is that not getting better? We did a chest x-ray this morning, which showed worsening infiltrate and also ARDS. He has been requiring a lot of a positive pressure for his oxygenation. So, not getting better. I'm sorry, what's this about the urine again? He can't pee? I thought you told me he had a catheter in. What? I just got here. I don't know what this guy is talking about. So, what I was saying is that his kidneys are not making much urine, which means that this is a sign of hypoperfusion of the kidneys. Meaning his pneumonia is so bad, his kidneys are affected. Well, not only that, but he has also developed signs of anosic brain injury. That's new. Does he have a stroke? It's kind of like a stroke, but most likely it's what we call anosic brain injury that he might have developed during the cardiac arrest. How can you tell though? I mean, he's, he's asleep. You know, we do sedation holiday, which means that we stop all the sedation, but even with that, he is not waking up. He is not following commands. Not to only mention that he has also required a lot of pressure on oxygen, and he is not even breathing beyond the set rate of on, the, on the ventilator. I mean, I, I don't know about all that, but he did blink more than a few times this morning to my voice. Uh, I mean, granted, it took a lot of effort. Um, Plus, didn't he move his arm at some point? You know, he may even blink or make some involuntary movements, but that doesn't mean that he has any more brain function left. You know, I know this is very difficult. All I'm telling you is that he has a very poor prognosis, given the fact that he has also very extensive metastatic cancer disease going on. His Apache score is very high on admission, 36. I think right now the best way to go is to put him to DNR, which means do not resuscitate. But isn't everything you're doing a form of resuscitation? What what would the DNR mean? You know, it means that if your father father in law sorry, if your father in law were to have a cardiac arrest, we wouldn't do CPR on him. Why wouldn't you do CPR on him? Because it's very unlikely to be successful. Even if he made it, he may have even more brain injury. During chest compression, he might also have a rib fracture causing pneumothorax. As well, as you know, he also has a very extensive advanced metastatic cancer going on. 
his Apache score was 36 on animation. I think we're just prolonging the inevitable. With that being said, I have brought with me a form that we use in the hospital. It's called Most form. I would like you to sign over here and also choose to not resuscitate, refuse dialysis. In the back, you can also choose Excuse to refuse me. nutrition. Sorry. Uh, you have done enough explaining. Now you need to listen. For you, the man in there is just another sick old guy. You have probably seen thousands like him and you're treating him like one in a thousand. And you think that doing extra for him will be a waste of your time. It's business as usual, makes everything easier for you. My position, however, is not as easy. He's not just some guy. He's not one in a thousand. He's the only father I will ever have. And you're coming here asking me to decide how he's going to die and how soon he's going to die. A decision that I will need to live with, not you. And you're waving this piece of paper on my face asking for my signature so you can make it all official. And you can move on to your next patient not feeling afraid that if my father dies, my family and I will sue. You know, I don't you think you understand. You need to leave us now. We'll let you know once we have a decision. Okay. What the fuck is an Apache score? Πώς να είναι, χάγια είναι. Πέφτει το οξυγόνο, ανεβαίνει το οξυγόνο. Πέφτει η πίεση, ανεβαίνει η πίεση. Δεν μπορώ να το πω να βρω ένα πνευστήρα. Και δεν το έχει δεχτεί ακόμα, αλλά θα αναγκαστεί, σύντομα. Και έρθει ένας ηλίθιος που από δύο μέρες έδωσε ένα χαρτί να υπογράψει. Εκείνη εκνευρίστηκε και το του είπε να το βάλει στον κόλλο του. Θα ξανάρθουν άλλοι δύο σήμερα. Ας ελπίσουμε ότι θα πάει καλύτερα αυτό. No, I don't believe you have met yet. I'm Patricio, his son. From Florida, right? That's right. My name is Dr. Irawan and this is Dr. Jose, and we are both residents in the ICU. I was wondering how much you knew about your father's current condition. Well, I know that he has a um, really bad pneumonia and he needs a machine to breathe and there are some other organs failing. It seems like his condition is not too great. That's right, in a nutshell. And how much do you know of your father's lung condition before he got the sick? Um, I know he ha also has COPD, um, that he got lung cancer. He was in the middle of chemotherapy when all this happened. Mm. Excellent. You seem to have a good grasp on what's going on. Please let me recap and elaborate um, what's been going on so far. So your father was very weakened by the chemotherapy and the pneumonia that he's having is very severe um, that he has stopped breathing on his own. And we had to help him with the breathing tube and ventilator. We have tried many times to bring him off the ventilator, but it seems that he cannot breathe on his own. And also, his infection is so overwhelming that his blood pressure is very low. We had to help him out with fluids and medications, and in the process, his heart and his kidney were damaged. In fact, yesterday night, his heart rhythm was very abnormal, and it was life-threatening. We had to give medications through his vein to bring his heart rhythm back to normal. We also did an ultrasound of his heart, which shows that his heart is not pumping well. <clears throat> it shows only 25% of the blood which is coming is being pumped out, and the normal is 65 to 70%. And this is this is sign of overwhelming infection. What about the whole brain and oxygen issue? So your father-in-law hasn't been as responsive 
as we would have expected. Initially, we thought that um, his unresponsiveness is due to injury because he has stopped breathing. However, we wanted to be sure, so we did a CT scan of his head. Why is that so? Unfortunately, the cancer has spread to his brain. Jesus. Can we give him more chemotherapy? He's probably falling behind. We don't think that we could recommend any further chemotherapy at this point. Firstly, it would worsen his infection right now, and, and secondly, it would his body wouldn't be able to tolerate it. So basically, what you're saying is that his cancer spread despite the chemo, that he's unable to breathe on his own, and there's literally no organ in his body that's working properly, including his brain and his heart almost stopped last night. Yes, that's true. So is there any scenario in which he makes it through this? I wish there were better news, but his chances are very low. Even if he survives, it won't be without cost. We would have to put a permanent tracheostomy, that's a tube through his throat, connected to a ventilator for him to breathe, and also a permanent tube in his stomach for nutrition. And furthermore, he wouldn't be able to tolerate chemotherapy. And most importantly, he could have another round of pneumonia or any other infection. That means he would have to be here right again. So do you need us to make a decision right now? We absolutely don't have to make a decision right now. We understand that these are really tough decisions for you to make as a family. We wanted you to have all the facts. So let me echo what Dr. Josie is saying that these are indeed very hard decisions. One way to approach this is to know what he would have wanted, what he would have done, what he would have enjoyed, and what his life philosophy was. I want you to think that if he were here right now, what would he say about the situation? Thank you very much for coming and for the information and your efforts. We'll let you know soon. Let me know if you have any other questions. We will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, one thing I clearly remember your dad saying is that if you need to feed me, bathe me, change my diapers, shoot me in the head instead. Sounds about right. Maria, you're the boss. What are we doing? I guess we're saying goodbye.
Is where.